Okay, so good morning. I'm so tardy. I'm so, I, this is not like me. I'm usually very early, <laughs> but um, I did not know so many things were going to happen today. And um, I'm Hilda Lopez from Santa Clara Public Library in the city of Santa Clara. And um, I'm here to tell you about our little ESL club that we have had now for maybe three years. I've been in charge of it for maybe almost two years of that. It was kind of handed down to me, um, which was a great hand down, one of the best hand-me-downs ever, because it, the foundation was already set. So what I did was just take my ESL class and tweak it to what I wanted it to be. And it has now become into this crazy, fun, 70 plus person a week attendee um, program um, to where I'm thinking now of bumping out our children's program to the smaller room because we need the space. It gets so hot in there from everybody yapping, it's great. And everybody's walking around and meeting and it's, it's fabulous, it's such a great turnout. The, the only problem with that is that they take their conversations outside into the library I'm like, oh, keep it down. So it's a great thing, right, to have to tell them, please keep it down because you're having too much fun at the library. But um, that's what we're all about. So we have a program, um, a volunteer coordinator who screens all our volunteers that we get in the building for all, for all of the library programs. And um, she's already been told, heads up, that we do prefer to have the native speakers. Um, it's what the people want. They've actually come up and, and told us, do you have somebody that only speaks English with no accent? I mean, I co completely understandable. I mean, they are there to enhance their English, um, to speak well, to, uh, you know, to hear a native speaker. So now we've, we, we do have some what do I, how do I call this, some, some lifer volunteers that do have an accent, but they speak English very well. So how can you say, no, you can't be in our, you know, we love our volunteers. We call our volunteers partners because volunteering sounds like you're getting your hands in there, which they are, but um, they're partners. So what we have is in our community room, we set up these tables, eight tables, eight seats per table. And um, at 1030, we're already set up. Um, I am not a librarian, I am a paraprofessional, para if I could even say the word. And I have an assistant um, who also is a library assistant, and she helps me with the setup. So now I'm in charge of also um, preparing idioms. So every day we have an idiom, we present them with the birthday suit idiom or, you know, you know, the grass is greener on that side or whatever. And everyone's so interested. So the element that I have brought into this is that I actually make them work. So we don't have a curriculum, of course. We don't have a, um, any homework involved ever. Our only homework is when we do have a potluck. <laughs> so we, they are the best potlucks. You're like, wow, Korean beef tacos, woo! Um, but they do bring in the best food. They pride themselves in bringing something from their countries. So when you can talk about food, that's always a great subject. Um, so we set up and prep the tables. We meet and greet the students. We always meet them. We don't make them sign up. So I guess in the beginning of our program, they did have a sign-up list. But sometimes people want to just go somewhere and not have to have that set curriculum like, oh, God, I have to put down my phone number and everything. No, you don't have to. It's a, it's a first come, first serve. You know, if there's space, you're more than welcome. If there's no space, we have another little separate room where we have the um, advanced English speakers with another partner that sits in a separate room because there are different levels. So we do have a table that we used to put um, beginner, beginner's level. We've now, I've now said, you know what, there should be no beginner's level because it just makes them feel a little bit inferior. So let's mix it up with the group. You know, if you're going to learn something, you have to learn with people who are at different levels. So it's nice to mix it up. And it's worked out wonderful. In our advanced group, what's really nice is that at Santa Clara, we have the reading program, which is Read Santa Clara the literacy for adults. And so from there, I kind of screen them, and then um, I say, you know what, I think it's time for you to move on. Let's get you a personal tutor. Let's get you en enrolled in Read Santa Clara. Let's, you know, get you, you know, assessed for whatever's coming up next in your life, whether it's GED prep or citizenship or just helping out your child at, with homework. Um, and we have had a lot of graduates from the ESL program onto our Read Santa Clara, which is what we're there for. Um, so we present the idiom or special items, you know, library events or, you know, different holidays coming up or just different things coming up in children's lives. I know that um, 
people sometimes don't read their children's calendars from school. Since I'm a, um, an old mom with young kids, um, I know that those school calendars can be tricky. I know that most of the people thought la yesterday all the kids had no school because it's Columbus Day. Well, guess what? Kids do have school. So when I told them last week, I said, don't forget on Monday, take your kids to school. No, no, we have, we have, they have vacation. I said, no. And so just little things like that, it makes them more aware, which is really nice. And then what happens is they sit down with their partners. We also have um, a lot of icebreaker games that are really nice. Francis, my assistant, has been, uh, we make them um, bigger size. I, I brought some samples, that's kind of silly, I don't know where I would put them. But they're just like um, shoots and ladders type of things. We use good old little buttons or little pebbles to do markers for each table. And they're questions like, silly questions like, you know, um, what was your favorite teacher? Or what was your subject in high school that you liked the best? Or different things, like, you know, just icebreakers, which are really nice um, for their tables. Plus, we do some for walking around the room, which is really nice. Um, and they start their group discussions. And the partners are there to, to make sure that that one person doesn't take over the entire table, to give everybody a chance. Or the partners there also, if the table is kind of like a little stale, boom, you go and you get some Kathy's cards. We have these Kathy cards, which I also brought, or some pronunciation cards. We have the atlases that also assist, like, where are you from, Timbuktu? Where's Timbuktu? Let's go get an atlas. They bring the atlas out to the table. We had some um, given to us by the Friends of the Library. I had first put in this huge budget that I needed all these things, and I did. We do need all those things. We need the dictionaries. We have um, the Kathy's cards, the pronunciation cards, the atlases. And those are awesome items to have because when you're trying to meet someone or tell them where you're from, the most exciting thing is talking about yourself, of course. So when you, uh, someone is able to open that book and say, this is where New Jersey is, they're like, oh, nice, you know, oh, I went there, and, and it starts a whole new conversation. So we provide them with just three giant atlases for all the tables because not everyone's going to talk about where they're from that same day, hopefully. Um, and so they start their group discussions, and let me tell you, at noon, we, Francis and I will go in there five minutes before, and they are like going at 100 miles an hour. And you almost think, gosh, I wish it could stay longer, but no, nope, next program's up, so they have to leave, unfortunately. So you know, the, it's really popular, like our colleagues here said, but the seasonal activities is what just, I don't know, it's just amazing. It even reminds me, and it rekindles good memories, and it's really nice. So you're getting your hands can be dirty but fun. And then, um, so, you know, last year I thought, okay, let me ask and see if they want to bring in costumes. Oh my gosh, 90-year-old women in little devil costumes. I'm like, oh, we scored. It was awesome. Because you don't think people are going to even consider the option, but they do. And that's what, you know, and, it, and it's, I don't know, it's a bonding time. It really is because those people keep coming back. They feel so comfortable. They feel like they're in a club, which they are, but it's like a little family <laughs> club. Um, so we have, you know, 72 participants card pumpkins for the first time. We're going to do it again this year. It was such a big hit. And I provided no stencils. They all wanted stencils. They all wanted to cheat. And I said, no, nope. because when I was a kid, we did it just with the knife and maybe a pencil or a pen. <laughs> and you're lucky if you got that. So um, good old-fashioned newspaper laid out on those tables. It takes no, no extra money, really, just the pumpkins. I brought all my steak knives from home and asked some friends, can I borrow some steak knives? Yeah, yeah. And we did it. They got, you know, I showed them to carve your little thing out, put your hands in there. We threw the seeds away. Some people wanted to say, I'm like, whatever. But um, it was just so fun. And it, it was beautiful. It really was. After that, we just provided some snacks. I actually made some uh, popcorn balls. Do not try the popcorn balls. Incredibly difficult, so messy. It took me like all night to make 100 rows. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> And my husband did not appreciate that either. Um, okay, and so winter time's coming, and of course, winter parties and everything, it's super fun. Um, what we did, I thought, you know what, let's throw the karaoke out. We did the karaoke. Loved it. You would not believe how many people know all the Elvis music. It was amazing. Um, we did Christmas Carol, and we only did it for 20, 30 minutes. Oh my gosh, it was a hit. They didn't want to, I mean, karaoke is big. So I mean, we didn't do karaoke. We just had the screen. I put a laptop. We did YouTube karaoke. It was awesome because we all sang. It was, it was a hit. Really fun. So try karaoke. It really loosens up those chords, and it just gets you going. 
Um, summertime, we do summer picnics. I didn't have the tables where we all had it set up because we were so busy setting it up. If you do do the summer picnics outside in the park, get help because Francis and I and <laughs> one more person did it. It took us all day, but it was so worth it. It was so beautiful. We did it out in this little meadow out in Central Park. Beautiful. And it was, it was just nice. And there we could stay all day. So think of how this is really an improvement and an enhancement for your library if you don't already do it. The partners give out ridiculous amount of hours. And those are just, you know, unfortunately, the best statistics for your library ever. You don't have to work or anything. Um, yes. And it's just really nice, really nice. Everyone should do it. So super easy. And I just wanted to say that uh, this year we did get a grant for $35,000 from the pitch to the idea. And it all came from, yes, the ESL group. Um, Angela O'Connor um, pitched it for their for our, our, our group, and we now have an ESL that is a night. Um, we are gonna offer it for Thursday nights for an entire year, different programming for children, families, teens, all kinds of things. And you know what? It's $35,000 that we didn't have last year. So it's wonderful. Um, thank you very much.